Okay, topic of the day is objects. Class seven, um, welcome to all of you who are hanging in here. I know this is an intense class, but um, you're doing great. Okay. So a couple of announcements, then we'll do lecture and then studio and then studio review. So this would be familiar format, right? We've been doing this for a while now. No surprises there. Okay, uh, student feedback survey. This is uh, on Canvas for you. It is required. Um, if you have not completed it yet, please do so today and your, your TA can give you some time in studio to do that. Shouldn't take too long. Um, Clark is still on vacation. Uh, Gracie is uh, available if you need um, somebody instead of Clark. <laughs> um, and then Clark should be back next week. Okay, so the graded assignment um, number two deadline. This is due on the 24th on Monday. Um, and as of tonight with objects, you know everything you need to know to complete it. Um, one thing I will point out is that unlike graded assignment one, this one's not broken up into multiple deadlines. It's just one deadline. And um, even though it's due Monday the 24th, be kind to your TAs and try to get it to them before the weekend so that they have time to give you feedback um, and grade it. And even if you don't have it 100% done, but you just need them to take a look at it, like get it to them, um, because that gives them time to work around their busy schedules to, um, cause they only have so many hours um, that they can give to you guys. And um, everybody, everybody's got different schedules. Um, however, having said that, class on Thursday, um, the 20th is, a catch-up class. We don't actually have a formal lecture in studio that night. So that is a great time to come in, ask questions, uh, catch up on anything you want to catch up on. Um, but you'll have a lot of room and we're going to be doing that from now on. So every time you guys have a graded assignment, the class before uh, is a catch-up class without, without the normal um, structure. Uh, but yeah, you can get started on it now um, after tonight and, um, you know, work out the kinks. And I will tell you, graded assignment number two is like my favorite of all the graded assignments. Uh, it's super fun. <laughs> you probably won't think so when you're struggling with it um, at first, but it really is. It's pretty cool. Okay. Objects. Uh, objects represent the real world. Um, <laughs> and I just realized I've got a... Uh, a, a work in progress here on my thing. I had a, a category I was going to do. Um, the concept of an object, we'll just talk about that briefly and then talk about uh, the data structure and kind of how it's structured. Uh, talk about objects versus arrays and then um, accessing properties, modifying um, properties and objects. We'll talk about methods um, and then iterating through objects. And uh, then we'll talk about the math object. Okay, so the concept of an object, what is an object? It can be anything. If you can describe it, it can be represented with code with a JavaScript object. So here's a couple examples. You've got an apple. You could say that this apple has properties. It has a diameter, it has color. Um, you could say, is it a citrus fruit? Is it not a citrus fruit? Um, and give those you know, properties values, right? And then for an orange, you know, you've got kind of the same thing. Um, they're very similar, but they have unique properties. So you could describe them these this way. Um, and I'm clicking and, okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know what's going on there. An object is represented in JavaScript with curly braces. Um, this looks a lot like, you know, the curly braces, the same curly braces that you use for loops and for, um, you know, functions um, and for conditionals. But in this case, it's just, uh, you can think of it more like the brackets of an array in terms of it's just holding the data. That's all that it's doing. And uh, because of that, you follow it with a semicolon. You may have noticed that over there on the right. Um, so we call the data that's stored in, um, like with arrays, you have elements, right? Um, objects have key value pairs. And if, um, and they're separated by commas. And of course I said before, they're, they're followed uh, by semicolon. Uh, so here's an example. We could say that um, the diameter, uh, if it's 2.5, we could just represent that with, you know, diameter, colon, and then 2.5. Um, 
and color, and then red, and red is a string. And then is citrus would be a, a Boolean, right? So instead of no, we would just say false. And then same thing with orange, um, three orange and true. Um, so here are some more things you need to know about keys and values specifically. Keys can be anything that are stored as a string, um, but you don't display it with quotes. Uh, you may have noticed that on the previous slide, but that is technically how it's stored, which will become important later. The key value pair is a regular property. If it's if the value is just something like you know a string, a number, a boolean, it can be an array. It can be another object. You can have nested objects. We won't get into that too much tonight, but um, yeah, anything like that, that's a regular property. However, if the value is a function, that's when we call it a method of the object. So here's an example. I've got this stove and I've you know, got these like regular properties, type, gas, finish, stainless steel, number of burners is a number, so that's four, and then has hood is uh, a Boolean. I was you know, reaching here guys, but it works. Um, so then we could also have a method, right? We could say, we're going to cook. And this is, uh, and so a, a great way to do this, um, and we'll get into multiple ways to do this in a second, but is to just declare an anonymous function, right? So we say it's a function, we give it a parameter food and we print out the food is hot, you know, whatever the food is. Um, so that's a pretty simple example, just to kind of show you all the parts that make up an object um, and how they're the same and how they're different. All of those though, I think um, to make that this point again, all five of those are key value pairs, right? But four are regular properties and one is a method. Okay, so objects versus arrays. While arrays and objects both hold collections of data, they are structured differently, the data is stored differently. So let's talk about that. With arrays, elements are ordered sequentially and they're located by index, right? You actually use numbers to locate them. Um, with objects, the order doesn't matter and you locate everything by key instead. That's all it does. You tell it what key you want, it goes and gets the value for you. So we've got this example, um, pillow info. Uh, you can see that as an array, and of course I've got this displayed vertically for the, because of space, but um, you know, I've just got four elements, right? Blue, round, velvet, 18. And then with an object, I can be more specific about what those values represent by giving them key names. Color is blue, shape is round, fabric is velvet size is 18. Um, and so if I wanted to um, go get the go get the value for uh, pillow info at index two, what would that be? Velvet. Velvet. Good. And if I wanted to say, you know, uh, go find the value of the fabric of this pillow, I could just do, you know, pillow is fabric and I would get velvet. So it's very similar um, in a sense as, you know, you're just going to access that information. You're going to look it up, um, but you use the keys with objects instead of an index number. Okay, so let's get into the notation. Obviously there I'm using bracket notation, right? There's actually two types of notation you can use to access properties um, with objects. You can use bracket notation and you can also use dot notation. So with bracket notation, you know, remember that I said that object keys are stored as strings. Um, that's important when you use bracket notation because then you actually do need to put it in quotes to, re to represent that specific key. Um, but with dot notation, you don't use quotes. Um, and of course you remember that for properties, you're not gonna use parentheses. You're only gonna use that for methods. We'll get into methods a little bit in a couple of slides here. So this example, I've got a novel. Um, the title is Peril at End House. The author is Agatha Christie and the number of pages is 226. I know this because I pulled it off of my bookshelf and looked. Um, and uh, so if I went to get a novel, um, the value for novel for the key author, uh, I would see Agatha Christie, right? And then, of course, uh, this one's dot notation. If I say novel dot title, that gets me Peril at End House. Peril at End House, 
Right. And then of course, num pages, I've gone back to um, bracket notation and that gives me the 226. Okay. So that's the basics of how to access properties. What about um, modifying them? So let's say we've got the same novel, right? Title, author, num pages. Um, if I want to set the value of a, an object's properties, I can do it directly, um, very similar to the way you can do it with arrays. And it, it, you, it actually works with both bracket and dot notation. So um, let's say I want to uh, set the title uh, to Sad Cypress. I'm changing books now. Um, and I want to do that with dot notation. What would I do? Novel dot, Novel dot title. Right. And then let's say I want to change the number of pages um, to 276 using bracket notation. Sure. Novel brackets, uh, num pages within there. Yes. And what do we have to do with num, num pages? Notations. Notations. Uh, oh, say, sorry, hang on. I've got uh, stuff coming all out of order. Okay. Yeah, it's got to be in quotes is what I was going to say. Okay. And then, um, gosh, man, these transitions, they get me every time. I got them all out of order. Um, I want to change the title. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I am adding the, uh, I'm adding properties now. So I, I want to add a genre. I can just do novel.genre and then set it equals mystery. And then if I wanted to uh, say, come up with a property called format with bracket notation, same thing. I would just say novel um, and then the key is going to be format, put it in quotes, and then uh, that's equal to paperback. So now if I console log the entire object um, briefly, what do I expect to see? How, how many uh, properties am I gonna have? Five. Yeah. So then we see Sad Cypress, Agatha Christie, 276, and now we've got genre mystery and format paperback. Does anybody have any questions about that? No. Yeah, this is pretty straightforward. Um, really, it just, I think where it takes practice is actually learning how to use it with all of your other code. Um, we'll do a little bit of that later. Okay, so methods, let's talk about methods. You wanna, um, I mentioned there were different ways to do this, right? So if you wanna add an existing function to an object, you can do that. Um, you will assign it to a key with a simple reference to the function. Um, and remember, you don't use um, parentheses for that because it's just a reference. And then later when you wanna call it, you'll use dot notation with the key name and pass any required arguments into the parentheses. So um, we've got this function, add nums, which you've seen before. And uh, I've created this object called add tool. And I said, the result is gonna be the, the you know, string uh, sum. Uh, the symbol is going to be the plus sign. And um, I want to add this function to stand in for the key calc. So how would I do that? Uh, you would just use either bracket or dot notation and then write add nums. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry. So uh, it's it's already, I, I'm, set, I'm setting it up that way to begin with. I'm initializing it that way. So yes, it you can just reference it. Yeah. Sorry. I wasn't clear. Um, I'm just going ahead and putting it in as I'm initializing it. And I would just reference it. Yeah. Add nums. That's it. But then when I want to call it, Let's say I, I have this variable, I create sum to hold um, the sum. Uh, how would I call it if I want to add the numbers four and seven? Add tool dot calc uh, parentheses four comma seven. Perfect, yes. So to reiterate, um, what we're doing there is we are starting with the object name we're calling the method on the object dot calc because that's the property name, right? That's the method name. And then we are using the same uh, parameters to pass arguments in as the original function add nums. So we're giving it the two numbers. And then of course we expect to see that sum is going to be 11 because it accessed that, it points, it points to that original function add nums. 
Okay, anybody have questions about that? This is definitely coming up for graded assignment too, so. Um, um, Kerry, can you uh, once again teach us? Say it again. Uh, can you teach us this part alone? You want me to just uh, say it again? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So uh, we have assigned um, adnums as the function for the key calc inside this uh, object add tool. Um, and so that's the key value pair. It's a method, not a regular property. And we've just referenced it so that it knows which function to point to because the function already exists outside the object in this case. And um, so then we go to call it we just uh, reference the name of the object, and then we call the function with dot notation, and then pass in the values for um, as arguments for the original function adnums. Okay, got it. Thank you. Okay, um, so now we'll talk about how to do it with an anonymous function. So um, let's say you want to do this. You, you would define the anonymous function with the object directly and then assign it to a key. And you would use the keyword um, this whenever you want to refer to the object's other properties or methods from inside the object. So let's say we've got this object called movie collection and I've got a number of titles. Um, I've got uh, Gusford Park, I've got Clue, um, and I and, and they exist in multiple formats. So I've got another array that holds all the possible formats in my collection, right? Um, DVD, digital. Um, and I have a, a method. And I want to write this method to um, add additional titles. So I've got, I'm calling it add title. Makes sense, right? Um, I set it up as an anonymous function using function and then just the parameter, which is passing in that title name. Um, and then I've got my, my brackets, and this is where I define the body of the function, right? Um, how would I add a title to the title's property from inside the object? This dot titles dot push parentheses title. Perfect. You got it. Yep. So this dot titles makes sure that it knows that it's the property titles from for this uh, object that it's inside. And then that's an array, right? The value of, of, of this dot titles is an array. And so you can use the array method push to add the title to that array. So I know this looks a little funky when you're looking at it for the first time, <laughs> but um, since I have limited time, I decided to, to co combine a couple concepts here. So this dot titles again refers to to its own property titles, and then dot push is the array method to add something to that array that titles represents the value of that key value pair. Okay, so now we're going to actually use it. We would call call the the method um, on the object. So I say movie collection dot add title, and then I pass in that new title dial m for murder. Um, so now if I go and I console log, you know, show me what movie collections dot titles is, what should I see? The array. Yep. And what will be in the array? Last report clue. And, and dial, in dial for murder. for murder. And dial in for murder. Yes. Because I've just added it. Okay. Who's got questions? Before we move on. Just to reiterate, this can only be used from within the function in the object. Yes, um, because it's an anonymous function um, that has been assigned to a key of that object, you can only call it on the object. Yep. Okay. Yeah, and that's why it's different from the previous slide, right? Because adnums 
you know, maybe you've got adnum sitting there and you're using it for other purposes, but you also want to assign it to this object, object so you can call it on that object, then you can use it both places. But in this case, with it being anonymous, it exists exactly here. So if you did moviecollection.titles.push, you'd get the same, but this just kind of abbreviates that? I, yeah, you absolutely could do it that way. Um, this this was just me coming up with a very short example. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, obviously, um, chances are, if you were doing something more worthwhile, it would be something that wasn't just as easily done in one line from the, yeah. Like maybe we'd also say, I just, you know, like print something to the console. I just, I just added this movie or so, you know, you could have multiple lines. I don't know, but yeah. Um, but this, but it, just to show you, I wanted to show you how to reference something from inside and then also, you know, how to call it. So, okay. So let's, um, we're going to do an example, um, a live coding example to do a whole bunch of this stuff all at once, um, in a minute. Um, let's talk about iterating first. So with arrays and strings, when you want to iterate through elements of an array or characters of a string, you use a regular for loop, right? Or a while loop. To iterate through object keys, um, there's a special uh, syntax called a for in loop. And it lets you, um, you, instead of using an index, you just use a variable and that will represent each key, but you just have a variable name in place of it. And then um, you can use bracket notation to access the value um, for that key on any given loop. So let's look at this example. We've got a song, the title is First Fires, artist is Bonobo, album is North Borders. So if I say, um, let's say I want to just iterate through this object. Um, how might I do that? And let's say, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, you don't know what I what, what I've typed in here, but um, or let info in sure. the song. Yes. So in this case, I, I chose property, but yeah, info. You could kind of come up with a, a, a generic word. You could even just use key. Honestly, that would work. Um, but sometimes you can be, depending on what you're doing, you can be more specific. Um, and it would be in song because we want to iterate through the object, right? So we're saying for each key that's in the song, uh, do this code. And then the code that's in the block will get executed each time. So first let's um, console log the key, uh, which would be? Property. Property. And then let, let's uh, console log the value. Title. Dot property. We can't use uh, dot notation. We have to use bracket notation. A song at uh, bracket notation uh, within quotes the key. Oh, no, no, within the quotes property. Yeah, and, and it actually would not be in quotes in this case because it it's a variable that stands for those strings, right? If you are using the specific string, you know what title, or excuse me, what, uh, what key you're, you're going for, then you need to put it in quotes to identify it specifically. If you are iterating through and you need to represent it and you don't know exactly what it is each time, then that's why we use a variable to, to stand in for the, the string. So, um, so then property wouldn't have quotes because it's a variable. And so then what do we expect to see when we run this loop? First of all, how many lines of code is it gonna generate? Or uh, uh, not code, how many lines? Uh, six, six values will be printed. Yeah, we'll have six, six lines in the console, right? What, what are we gonna see first? Uh, key value followed uh, the key value. It'll be title first. Title and then? First fires. Yep, and then? Artist. Right. And then, yeah, artist, then Bonobo, then album, then North Borders. Yeah, because it's going to print the key and then the value each time as it iterates through. Um, and so this is a really valuable um, thing to know because 
the key, the key, <laughs> so to speak, the uh, important thing to remember is that um, the key is that variable that you set, but the value has to be accessed using bracket notation on the object. So that's why you have to say song and then put that variable property in the brackets. That's the only way to get to the value. It's just like you would do it if you were hard coding it. But in this case, you're using a variable because on every single loop, it's gonna be different, right? The first time it's title, the second time it's artist, the third time it's album. Does that make sense? And the word property could be anything, right? It could be anything, yeah. That's what, yeah, like um, somebody had suggested info, right? Like that would have worked. You could use key, you could use um, anything. Mm -hmm. It's really whatever you set, you just have to remember that once you set it, they, that's what you use. Sorry, uh, where dot will be coming and where the uh, bracket notation will be coming. Uh, it's quite confusing. You can use either one for anything except this. Um, if you need to use a variable to represent the key, you use bracket notation. But if you're if you're accessing a value or setting a value um, for a, a for a property, you can use either one, as long as you put the key in quotes with brackets. Um, and then the, the other time that you can only use, I actually just to be super clear, uh, only dot notation is with methods. You don't use bracket notation with methods. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, so let's sw uh, switch over and let's do a whole like exercise to like go through all of these concepts, right? Um, all right. So we're going to create an object to represent a movie and initialize it with a title and um my goodness, uh, Replit has been super slow. It keeps like lagging on me. Um, and then I like lose my cursor and my mouse and okay. So uh, somebody tell me how I'm gonna do this and you guys can totally make up the names, right? I wanna create an object to represent a movie. How do I declare and initialize it? Let me equal, equal curly bright. Okay. And it says to initialize it with a title. How do I do that? Title, title colon space. Uh huh. And somebody pick a movie. Let's do it. Something that everybody knows. Die Tree Hard. Dire. I'm oh, sorry. Say it again. Die Hard. Our name Die is hard. The Lion King. <laughs> Die Hard. The quintessential Christmas movie. Yes. Um, I did watch all the Die Hard movies last Christmas. I honestly did. Um, okay, so we have, that's good. So that's kind of all we need. I'll, you know, tack a little um, semicolon on there. Um, and then let's just console log it to, um, and sorry guys, I've got a whole bunch of other stuff up here that are from the slides. And I've got some other stuff that I will add to the slides too. So there, <laughs> there's extra stuff that's going to be printing out. And I forgot to, uh, I forgot to comment it out. Um, Oh my goodness. You know what I'm going to do actually? I'm going to move this to the bottom so that every time we make a change, it'll only print it once, but we can see the most recent version. I think that's better. Okay. All right. So we've got, and I've got stuff down here too. Sorry. Uh, go away. Go away. We'll do that in a minute. Okay. Sorry, just real quick. Yeah. Um, what's the hotkey for common and out? Um, it is uh, command slash, or okay. I guess it would be control slash if you're on a Windows machine, probably. Do we need a comma after the die hard? You don't when it's the last one, but honestly, um, everywhere that I, everywhere that I've worked, the last two places I've worked for sure. Um, when, when their linters went through and like formatted everything nicely, they put commas even on the last one. So it's not a bad habit to be in because that tends to be the preferred way to do it. It, it prevents, um, errors because if you go and you add more on later and you modify your code, you don't accidentally leave the comma off when you're adding more because it's very easy to do as you, I'm sure you will find out. So yeah, that's perfectly valid. Okay, so now let's add um, a key value pair to represent the genre. How would I do that? And let's do it uh, with um, bracket notation. Woo. So 
Somebody give somebody somebody tell me what to do. Movie practice. Movie index within quotes. Gen genre. Okay, and uh, what do we want to call this? An action movie, I guess. Christmas movie. Christmas. <laughs> Christmas movie. I love it. <laughs> Perfect. Too perfect. Okay. Um, okay. So we have initialized that. So now if I run it again, we see we have title, die hard, genre, Christmas. Okay. Let's do it again, but with dot notation this time and uh, hold <laughs> the number of times that you've seen it. Would it be movie, movie dot genre? Or, oh, we're not doing genre. We're doing, I don't know, watch times. I don't know. Watch count. You count. Yeah, let's do watch count. I like that. That'll work. Um, yeah, it could be lots of things, right? But uh, okay. And um, who here has watched it a whole bunch of times? You can Keep say 12. 12. <laughs> I said 22. Oh, 22. Even better. Oh. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Um, yeah. So let's do that. should have said 25. It's a Christmas movie. Oh, yeah. Okay. We can make it 25. Why not uh, stick with the theme? Um, it's going to change in a minute, though. I'm going to warn you. Um, yeah. Now we have three uh, keys, key value pairs, right? Um, okay. So we're going to do one more. Um, and this time, let's do it. Uh, I mean, it could be either notation. Let's just do uh, dot notation. And add another pair to represent a list of of actors, but we don't want to add any names just yet. How how would we do that? Movie dot actors equals empty bracket. Yes, we want to initialize an empty array. Okay, and now if we want to add some um, names to that list, how would we do that? Would it actors. be actors dot? Um, we would do actors, then we'd use dot notation to add how many, whatever actors. I've actually never seen it, so I don't know, but we would add their names after that. Movie dot actors equals, and then put your names in the brackets, so you're filling in the empty array. You could do it that way. Um, you could, like, just overwrite what's already there. Yeah. Um, Are we pushing? Movie dot actors push. Dot push? But you yeah. also, yeah. So, like, you could just go ahead and say, you know, uh, well, actor, Bruce Willis, etc. But um, what we will do instead is, yeah, push it. So movies, uh, movie uh, dot push, and um, sorry, movie dot actors dot push, right? Um, yeah. So movie dot actors is the key, and then we're pushing into into the array. Okay. And so yes, we have Bruce Willis. We have um, Alan Rickman. The incomparable Alan Rickman, yes. <laughs> uh, who else is in that movie? Reginald Vell Johnson. Say it again. Um, uh, Reginald Vell Johnson. Now he was uh, Carl on Family Matters. Reginald, Reginald, what's the last name? Uh, Vell Johnson. Vell Johnson? Vell Johnson. One word, V-E-L, capital J. He was also in Richard the Third. Okay, I don't know him. Wow, okay, okay. Uh, good, so we have uh, at least three uh, actors, right? Um, so, but that should do it. That should make it where when we run this now, yeah, we have our actors and you can see that inside the object with the actor's key, we have that whole array right there. Good. Um, okay, so now let's add a method. Let's add a method. Um, called uh, watch movie that prints a statement with the movie's title and updates the number of times you've watched the movie. How are we gonna do it? Movie dot watch is equal to function parentheses bracket. Yes. Okay. Um, and we don't really we don't really need uh, a parameter, right? Because we're just printing a statement with movie with information that already exists, and we are um, 
going to just be updating another property that already exists um, by a set amount. So, I mean, I guess if you if you watched it three times, three more times since the last time you updated it, then you could put a number in, but let's just go with one. Okay, so uh, first we print a statement, console.log. Um, I watched, uh, let's, let's do it as a template literal. It's easier to read. All right, and then um, how do I reference? Um, remember that this is stored within the object. So how do I reference the, the title? This dot title. Good. Okay. Um, so that's order. That's uh, yeah. That's that's item number one. Item number two says to update the number of times I've watched the movie. How would I do that? This dot watch count plus plus. Good. All right, let's see if this works. <laughs> Good. And I should have had a semicolon here, technically. Um, yes. And now when we print it, we see that it says that it's an anonymous function. Um, but it doesn't give us the definition of it. Um, but but that's normal. Um, what if I were to console log? I think if I just do, if I do this uh, watch movie, it's still gonna um, give me the same thing. Yeah, okay. Um, but if I actually call it, I watched Die Hard again. And now if we were to um, actually, you know what I'll just do, I'll move this down. So it goes next second. Yeah, now it says that I've watched it 26 times. Oh, it's undefined. Why is it undefined? Because there's no return value. Oh, right, right, right. And, and it just puts, yeah, it puts that in there. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I, <laughs> yes. Hmm, so really what I should have done is just this, right? because I really just, all I wanted to do was call it. I'm not trying to print anything. There we go. Okay, and it updates it from 25 to 26. Um, and of course it's not continuing to update it because I'm refreshing the entire thing the whole the time. So it starts over at 25 again. Okay, so uh, good. Last bit, let's iterate through the key value pairs and print the key is value to the console. All right, you guys are driving. You tell me what to type. Let's use that for in loop. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's do let key in uh, movie. Okay. Yeah, let's just console log. Uh, Uh, well, movie is the object, right? And we only want to print the key and the value that we're looking at on each loop. Movie title. Yeah, no, just use key. Close. Yeah. And, and then, then move that key. And then what now? movie and then it has to be in the brackets key it does have to be in brackets yeah. that's right because it's a variable mm -hmm. um okay so i think that will work let's run it there we go the title is die hard the genre is christmas the watch count is 25 the actors is that doesn't really make sense and of course this is not a pretty print right uh but it works for our purposes for right now and then the watch movie is function. And then it does actually um, show you, <laughs> in this case, what the function is. It stringified it, um, which is really interesting. Um, that's very interesting. Uh, yeah, that's the difference between just printing the object with its values and actually like assigning it uh, as a in a template literal like this, because then it stringifies it and it gives you the you know, literally what was there, which is pretty funny. 
Um, but yeah. So what causes the function to turn into a string like that? It's because we put it in a template literal. And so JavaScript takes it and actually it's called stringifying um, because we forced it to convert it to a string by putting in a template literal like this. Haley, you have a question? This might be a stupid question, but I think I ran into it on one of the exercises. Um, can you run one of these through a function without the function being directly in it, if that makes sense? So like on this, we attached movie.watchmovie, that function. But if we just had a standalone function, can you still run these through a standalone function? Does that make sense? I'm sorry. Uh, you could. Um, yeah, like we could have a function um, that is, you know, declared completely separately. That's, um, you know, uh, let's see, what, what did we do? Oh, we were um, watch, watch movie. Uh, let's say we do kind of like we did with the other thing, right? We uh, we we add um, add more actors um, just because I'm trying to think on the on the fly, and we'll say you know we're putting in um, actor or actors. It doesn't matter if we use push, right? Um, and it actually just goes, and then we would say, you know. Um, But, oh, okay, 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 hold on. And if you want it to work for any object, then you could specify which object you're talking about. So let's let's do this, because this is a good exercise. Um, and we'll actually, and maybe I should do that in the opposite. So we start with the object. Um, it doesn't really matter, but um, okay. So I would say that I want to go to the object and I want to access the actor's um, property. And then uh, I want to push, and that's where I push the actor name in, whatever that, whatever that is. Um, Preferably Alan Rickman a second time. Yes, yes, uh, because he is that fabulous. Um, so then we could actually, uh, you know, go and do that, but we would just be calling it like normal, and then you would pass in movie, and pass in, yeah. And let's just do Alan Rickman again because why not? Um, and uh, then uh, let's see. I should probably put this above here so that we can see the console log at the end. Carrie, how did you just do that? How did you just like essentially drag that? Oh, okay, so you highlight, um, if you're doing a single line, you can just put your cursor anywhere. But um, if you wanna do multiple lines, you just highlight them and then uh, use the option or which on a Mac, um, but on a PC, it would be alt, I think. Um, and then you just hit the up or down arrow like that. And then if you want to like copy it, you also hold down the shift key and you can copy it like that. Thank you, because all I've been doing is copy and pasting. Yep. When I, I need actually to move. only learned how to do that like a year ago when I was ecstatic when I found out because it's so much easier. Um, and it only takes a little bit of practice and then you got it down and um, I do it without thinking about it now. Um, okay, so we we ran this, we looked at it. And now when we look, um, we see that we did a successfully indeed add Alan Rickman a second time, second time to the actors array. Thank you. Uh, one more question and I'm gonna, we gotta move on to the math object. Eric? Uh, yeah, how do you, so before when you stringified the function, how do you make it, how could you actually run the function? How would you have to change it? Um, if you, oh, uh, you would have to check to see if it is a function first in a situation like this, because um, it's generic, right? you don't know what the value is because it's iterating through and it's checking each key one at a time. And most of them are not functions. So we would have to have some sort of conditional logic to say like, you know, if it's, you know, a function, then, you know, do this instead. Um, but yeah, but I, I won't go into that right this second because we do have to move on. But yeah, you, you'd have to, you'd, that's the th thing about looping through is 
you have to be sure that you know what data types you have if you want to do something specific because they may not be all the same, right? Um, I mean, it's kind of the same thing with we have we have an array um, as one of our things, so we couldn't we couldn't do with something as simple and we couldn't do math, right? We couldn't try to do math with each of these because only one of them is actually a number. So you kind of have to uh, know the situation and uh, choose your code accordingly. Um, if we want to do something to a function, we're probably not going to do it in a loop, a looping situation like this. Okay, let's uh, move on because we got a few slides to get through here. Let's talk about the math object. Um, this is pretty straightforward. Um, JavaScript uh, math object offers alternatives to using the double asterisk for exponents and square roots. Uh, math.pow um, allows you to specify base and exponent and math.squirt uh, takes the square root of a number. So you can have um, four star star two, or you can have math.pow and give it four and two, and you'll get 16, four squared. Um, likewise, you could have two to the third power, right? And you could say math.pow and then give it two and three, and you'd get eight. Um, for square roots, the only way to do a square root is to use, you know, the fractional exponent. So you would say, you know, 25 to the, to the power of a half would be the square root. Um, or you can use math.square root, which is much easier, um, and just give it 25 and it'll give you five. And um, I could do 20 and it will give me, you know, this incredibly long decimal number. Um, if I tried to do negative 144 and take the square root of that, what would I get? You guys have any guesses? Twelve I. <laughs> yeah, it, JavaScript doesn't give you the imaginary numbers, unfortunately. So it just gives you a not as not, not a number. <laughs> That's what it does with uh, with imaginary numbers. Okay. Um, so rounding and truncation, there are four functions that can um, round essentially, um, but uh, they all work a little bit differently. Um, regular dot round just rounds to the closest integer, up or down, whichever is closer. Dot seal for sealing goes to the next higher and dot floor goes to the next lower. Um, truncate simply removes everything after the decimal point. Doesn't matter what it is, it just removes the stuff after the decimal point and you're left with the part that was before the decimal point. Um, so let's look at some, some examples of this. Math.round 5.42, what am I gonna get? Five. Five. Math.round 7.8. Eight. Eight. Okay, math.seal 13.2. 14. 14. 14. Good. Math.seal negative 7.7. 7. Negative, negative seven. seven. Negative seven. Negative seven, that's right, because it's the next highest. Math.floor, 29.6. 29. 29. And negative 31.9. Negative 32. Negative 32. Good. Yeah, because it's the next lowest. Okay. Truncate. Uh, 1.489. One. 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 And negative 94.5. Negative 94. That's right. You don't have to think about up or down with truncate. It just takes the decimals off. So it's important to know the distinctions there um, because there are some situations where it can come in handy to use one for a very specific purpose. We will see that in a minute. Uh, math, maximum and minimum. So um, you can find the lowest or highest numbers in a list of numbers. Um, you give it a set of numbers and it'll find um, you know, one or the other. But here's an important caveat. This does not work on an array. You can't give it an array because it's not going to know what to do with it. So um, there's this thing called a spread operator that actually basically extracts all of the numbers from the array and just gives it the numbers. So you can see the first examples here. I've got math.max and I've just I've given it some numbers. They're not in an array. They're just a list of numbers. Um, and from that, I would expect to see six. Six. Yeah. And for math.min. One. One. Right. Okay. So let's say I've got an array and I want to find the max or min and min of those. Um, I've got this array, you know, 12, 7, 53, 9, 4, 26. Uh, I use the spread operator in front of the array, and it can be an actual array or it can be the variable that represents the array, which is what I've done here with nums. Um, 
and I use dot, dot, dot nums, that'll give me what? 53. 53? Yeah. yeah. And, and with, with math.min, I get four. four. Yeah. Four. So that's, that's the trick with that is if, because most of the time it's honestly, you're probably going to be working with an array, right? You're not going to be hard coding a bunch of numbers separately. So this is an important way to know that if you want to use these, use that spread operator in the front and it'll actually take the numbers out of the array and plug them into the um, method. So the dot, dot, dot properly? is the spray, right? Sorry, say it again. The dot, dot, dot is the spread, spread that's, operator? That's the spread okay. operator. Mm -hmm. And does that work properly with negatives as well? Uh, does it work with negatives as well? It yeah, like negative numbers? Yeah, it should. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yep. But uh, you have to be careful. Do you have to be careful with that, though, when you uh, have an array with repeat numbers? Like if, it, if, you're, if the reason you were calling that uh, math.min or math.max was because you were wanting to find a specific occurrence of that and you had duplicates. I only ask because I actually tried doing this and I realized, oh, this is a problem. I have duplicate minimums of the same thing, and but this is going to make it more difficult for me to actually. It's uh, the same as if you look through and check for it yourself, um, like you did in studio last week. Um, it, it's going to co come across the first one it finds. Yep. So yeah, you would have to um, have another way to handle it if you're trying to look for something that is the same, but not the first one. Yeah. Okay. Randomization. So um, JavaScript math object makes it easy to do this. You just have to know how to use it. So math.random generates a decimal number be between zero and one. And when I say between, um, I need to be more specific because it includes zero, but it does not include one. Everything up to one. Um, so to get something greater than one, you just multiply math times math.random by the number you want as that upper bound, okay? Um, and then if you need to be specific because you want like for sure to go from like, um, you know, zero and you wanna make sure it's an integer, so you wanna round it, but you wanna make sure it starts with a zero. Uh, and like, say, say you want, um, an, you know, to use it for a number between one and 10, you can say, but I want to make sure zero is included. Then you can use math.floor. Um, if instead you wanted to say, I actually want a number that goes from one to 10, then you can use it with 10, but use math.seal to round it instead. And then you'll get one to 10. So let's look at this. Um, math.random. And of course you can't guess what this is going to be because it's random, but I've put something in here. Uh, you might get a number that looks like this with just math.random because it's going to be less than one. Um, but you can multiply it by a number like six, and then you'll get something that's in between, like, you know, 4.259, et cetera. Um, so if I were to say, I'm going to find a number um, from zero to 20, and I'm going to round it with math.floor, what's the highest possible number I'm going to get from that? 19. 19, 19 right? Because it's going to give you from zero to 19 by rounding down. But if I use math.seal, what's the highest number I would expect to get for that same expression? 20. 20, because it's going to go from zero, to, I'm, I'm sorry, from one to 20, exactly. Um, so you're going to have certain applications where you're going to want to zero index things, and you're going to have other applications where you're going to want to start with one. So then just make sure you choose wisely. Um, Rocco, you got a question? Uh, yeah, just so when we do the multiplication it doesn't matter if it's in front of or after the nope. uh yeah okay doesn't matter yeah a times b is b times a <laughs> um ben in place of a number uh to multiply against math that random can you do variable dot length uh yeah absolutely um it, i mean you, yeah, if you had a reason why you wanted it to be a variable range every single time that, um, and you don't know what that's going to be, it's going to be represented by some variable, then yeah. Um, most applications you're going to have in your head what the range is going to be. And so you're probably going to, you know, um, hard code it, but yeah, you absolutely could. Um, okay, so let's uh, real quick before we um, open up for studio, um, I had a couple other things to do here. Okay. So here's um, 
one uh, possible thing we could do here. Um, Math.round lets you round a number as an integer, right? So let's say that we want to actually round it to a certain number of decimal places. And this came up like in class one or class two or something. And we talked about it and I posted something. But now that we're actually here and we're talking about the math object, I wanted to revisit it. Um, so um, essentially the format here is if you have some number and I hard coded a number here, it's got to roll along, you know, decimals and you want it to a certain number of decimal places. You just kind of create a factor of 10 to the power of, and I totally could have done here, guys, uh, math.pow, right? 10 and three. Um, why not? Since we're talking about this. Um, to, to uh, Because three is the number of decimal places we want. So however many decimal places you want, that's the exponent. And then you just use that factor, multiply the factor times the number, and then round that, and then divide the result of that expression, math.round number times factor, by the factor again to bring it back to where it was before, only with, with only the decimal numbers that you want. Um, so we can see this here. Um, the result is 52.358 um, because I've got three. And if I change this to six, we get 52.358466. So uh, what I was going to do is to write a function to round any number to any number of decimal places. Um, so let's do that real fast. Um, uh, let's see, round uh, to decimals. Okay, and then we'll, we'll say it needs to take a number, right? And it needs to take um, the number of decimals. Let's say num decimal. Okay. Uh, all right. So we have our number. Um, so let's let's say we're going to have this uh, local variable factor inside this function. We would just say you know math dot power ten and then give it the number of decimals. And that'll be variable now, so it's useful for us. Um, it's not hard coded anymore. Um, and then we would just say return uh, math.round and we'd multiply the number times the factor and divide by the factor after it's been rounded. And then we can say console log um, round to decimal and let's give it, you know, I don't know, I'm gonna, gotta use the, <laughs> And uh, let's give it four, uh, for example. And then, um, you know, we'll do it to two. And then, you know, just to prove it works, we'll do it uh, to zero. Um, yeah. And we get 25.5849 to four places, 25.58. Um, so it can be helpful for you sometimes to write little utility functions like this um, if it's useful for you to use in different places in your program. Um, and that way it's really flexible and you can give it exactly what you want in one place and then use it again somewhere else where you might want like a different number of decimal places or, um, you know, yeah, uh, uh, or, or just to be able to handle, just to be able to handle. And you could even, um, you could even initialize this to zero so that it can be left out. Um, and that way, you know, if you, for some reason, wanted to just do it like normal, <laughs> you still could, right? And it would still work. Um, of course, at that point, you can just use math.round, but um, yeah. Does anybody have any questions about that? No. Yeah, I'm going to send you off to studio, but I will show you. I'm going to have this as an example. Um, it'll, it'll be in this REPL when I link it. It'll also be on a slide in the slides. Um, but there's another function that I have written here that actually lets you set both a um, you can have your max, but then you also can have a minimum and it defaults to zero, but you can set it to be a specific number because maybe you actually want a random number from five to 10. You don't want it to be zero or one. Um, and you also can specify the number of decimal places that you want to round to. And this function takes care of all of that. It, um, it rounds it with floor. Um, it allows you to get the difference between the max and min and get a random number based on that. 
Um, and then at the very end, this entire thing um, gets added to the minimum to make sure that it is definitely greater than that minimum number. Uh, so you could have a little fun of that if you want to play around with it. Um, I can show you how it works. Yeah. So uh, a number between 100 and 200 to four decimal places gives you 197.5836. If I just want to randomize a number between zero and 10, I get four. Um, okay. Ooh, um, there's lots more that I would love to show you about objects. I actually have a number of exercises in my collection of exercises about it. And um, I have a couple of different prep exercises for graded assignment two as well um, that I really should just bring up and show you. Um, okay, let me pull this up. We'll skip down to page seven. Oh, well, no, before we skip down, let me, oh man, <laughs> here we go. Yeah, so here's some object exercises. If you want to go in and get some more practice with all of this or starter code and solution. Um, and then I also have uh, these uh, prep exercises. There's two of them here um, with, with videos that go along with the, uh, the live tutorial I did. It's got a demo you can go and try out to see how it works from the user perspective. Um, and these can be really handy for uh, really getting you uh, in the um, in the right headspace for how to put together a more complex program, and it will help you prepare for the Scrabble score uh, assignment. But for tonight, you've got something simpler to do. Tonight, you are going to use um, math object and uh, work with arrays and functions and, and objects to uh, select ID numbers, to build a crew, um, and to do some uh, calculations that need to be done uh, for your mission and also figure out how much fuel is needed um, in the, in the bo bonus mission here. And there's a separate REPL for that. Um, so uh, you can definitely um, you know, go back to the book um, and any other uh, things that you need for reference on kind of how to, how to do this, but work together as always, you'll get it done faster and, and better. Um, and see, I feel like, yeah, so we are here. Yeah, and then of course, we'll come back and do the solution at the end and then I'll, I'll have that link in the slides here for you. Real quick, um, class eight on Monday is modules, um, which you do not need for graded assignment two. You don't need that until graded assignment three. Um, but we uh, definitely will be digging into that and it's pretty cool. You've seen examples of it already and some of the stuff that you've got um, that where launch code is, you know, had multiple files and exports and all that stuff. That's what modules are. Um, you're gonna have this catch up class on, um, in a week, Thursday the 10th. I'm sorry, excuse me, Thursday the 20th. And then the following class um, says modules and that's wrong because it's, uh, I believe classes. Oh boy, hang on. I didn't update this, I apologize. Uh, <laughs> it's the wrong thing. Again, too many windows, guys, too many windows. Here we go. Yeah, this is what I want. Um, give me a second here. <sighs> okay, my bad. Uh, okay, unit testing, yes. Chapter 14, unit testing, that's what we're doing. Uh, here, so I will fix that on here. Um, but this is the night that graded assignment two is due. So um, just wanted to kind of get that on your radar um, a little bit in advance, uh, but that's that. So head off to studio and I will see you back here at eight o'clock sharp for um, review on tonight's studio assignment.